Scientists and sea biologists say that the mass of squids on the planet exceeds the mass of all people. Keep this fact in your mind while you listen to the story of the Kraken. So no one knows exactly what this giant sea monster looks like. But according to the stories of old fishers and taverns, the records of travelers and legends, the Kraken looks like a giant squid. If so, it has the squid's anatomical properties and reproductive functions. And this is a big problem for us. A female squid can lay anywhere from three to 100,000 eggs. Even if most of them don't survive, it's still a lot. Many of these creatures live in the ocean's dark depths that people haven't yet fully explored, and it seems we'll know more about squids soon. The metabolism of these creatures is accelerating thanks to the increase in water temperature, and this causes population growth. Scientists call squids the weeds of the seas because of their rapid reproduction. They can potentially exceed the population of all fish and mammals. Perhaps there will be so many of them soon that they won't have enough food on the ocean floor. They will begin to migrate closer to the surface. Small squid and monstrous giant ones. There may be a kraken among them, or a few, or even tens, hundreds of thousands. And if this happens, humanity and all animals on Earth will face a huge problem. As the kings of nature, people can easily invent poison to destroy krakens. But how to spread this poison? Giant squids, along with ordinary fish, dolphins, whales, seaweed, and phytoplankton, will suffer if it gets into the water. More than half of the world's oxygen is produced by the ocean. And if people spread this poison in the water, they'll risk disrupting the entire planet's ecosystem. The ocean will become lifeless. So. People have to forget about poisoning the water. For a while, we will be helpless against the squid apocalypse. Let's say a couple of billion squids rise to the surface. A couple million of them are krakens. The first thing these monsters will want to do is get food. Lunch for them can be both shoals of fish and massive whales, and no one can stop them. Even if megalodons existed, they wouldn't be able to resist the giant tentacles and strong beaks of krakens. The fish population in the ocean has declined. This means that people can't go fishing anymore. We can catch fish in lakes, rivers, and seas, but it's not enough. Seafood has become very expensive all over the world. A fish tank with goldfish is a luxury. Of course, humans learn to catch giant squids, which solves the problem of hunger in some areas. The profession of a squid catcher is becoming prestigious all over the world. This kind of fishing is dangerous and requires a lot of strength and courage. The second problem is sea travel. Every day, people transport millions of tons of cargo across the ocean. Huge businesses and economies of entire countries work thanks to such transportation. But now, krakens swim close to the surface and make any voyage dangerous. One monster can quickly destroy a small ship. Ten or twenty krakens are able to sink a giant cargo vessel. This leads to a reduction in logistics chains. Communication between continents is now maintained by air. The number of flights is increasing. Plane tickets are rising in price. Travel is becoming too expensive. This leads to a reduction in the number of tourists in some countries, which disrupts their economies. There are more krakens and less food. Resting on a beach also becomes dangerous. Aggressive, hungry giant squids can come ashore to catch sunbathers. All shores are fenced. Swimming is forbidden. Of course, scientists invent some things to fight squids. Sound barriers, for example. Every ship is now equipped with a device that launches powerful ultrasonic waves into the water. They scare away all the fish and clear the way for boats. In the beginning, it helps, but then Kraken stop fearing it. Ultrasound only angers them. They pounce on ships and break sound barriers. Another thing that scares them away is sunlight. For millions of years, Krakens have been living on the dark ocean floor. Their eyes are used to the darkness, so they fear the bright light. During sunny weather, ships move freely. But as soon as the sun goes below the horizon or clouds obscure it, sea monsters come out of the ocean depths. It doesn't help much because it's impossible to sail across any ocean within a single sunny day. In addition, there is no guarantee that you won't get caught in a storm when the sun is hidden behind the clouds. That's why people invent powerful floodlights. They direct their beams at monsters' heads and drive them into the dark depths. Such projectors are expensive because they require a lot of energy. Only some ships can afford such a device. And while people seek more effective ways to fight krakens, squids multiply, and this becomes the solution to the problem. The ocean is running out of fish. Food is not available on land. Like a snake devouring its tail, squids start fighting with one another. 
The water foams, and squids cling to each other with tentacles. Big krakens defeat smaller monsters. Their population is shrinking. A few giant squids the size of the Eiffel Tower survive after long battles. And when the fight is over, little squids come into play. Billions of cephalopods pounce on giant krakens. They are like flies clinging from all sides. Giant monsters can't fight them. Great, the problem with voyages is solved. Large ships can set sail, but it's still dangerous for people to swim in the sea since tiny monsters are still hungry. Logistics chains have been restored, but fish are still scarce in the ocean. Squids, like parasites, don't allow other creatures to dominate. And here, scientists come to help fish. Let's go back to our reality for a second. There's such a thing as a gene drive. It's a substance that changes the genetic code of living creatures. For example, scientists have implemented a gene drive in mosquitoes that cause malaria. Biologists changed the genome of these insects, so some female mosquitoes became infertile. Then these females spread the gene throughout the mosquito colony. As a result, more insects that couldn't conceive appeared. They continued to spread the gene, and this went on until the population reduced significantly. A gene drive is a low-cost way to get rid of invasive species of insects or rodents. Thus, scientists can control the population of entire species. But such actions can be dangerous. If some animal disappears, it can disrupt the whole ecosystem and lead to the disappearance of other animals. In the case of mosquitoes, nature didn't suffer much. So scientists use a gene drive against squid. But why couldn't they do it from the very beginning? Ordinary squids didn't pose a threat, and their average life expectancy is from three to five years. If scientists had launched a gene drive, then in seven years, all small squids would have disappeared. But it wouldn't have worked with krakens. According to myths and legends, one such monster can live for several hundred years. Now when small squids have solved the problem with large ones, a gene drive comes into play. It takes several years to get rid of the squid. The ocean ecosystem begins to recover. People take fish and marine mammals from seas and rivers and transfer them to the ocean. The population of whales, sharks, octopuses, salmon, and hundreds of thousands of other species is growing. But then another threat awakens in the depths of the ocean. It turns out that when squids and krakens lived on the ocean floor, they didn't let even more terrible monsters move to the surface. Now that all arthropods have disappeared, new monsters are breaking free. First, marine earthquakes begin. But then, scientists discover that it's not the seabed shaking. Those are the backs of giant crabs. Hundreds of thousands of armored monsters with claws are rising to the surface. And this time, they can come ashore. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. The Stonefish Stonefish aren't going to win any beauty contests. Unless the pageant is for best rock look-alike, their tiny unreflective eyes and rough skin blend in perfectly with their environment. A large head, an even bigger mouth, and a home full of… yeah, it's rocks. And just because you're on the beach doesn't mean you're safe. Stonefish can survive for 24 hours out of the water. Stepping on one or even handling one won't be that fun. Their dorsal fin spines have extremely strong venom. It shoots out when they get stepped on, and it can lead to paralysis or even heart failure. You'll need help fast. No wonder they're one of the most dangerous creatures in the water or anywhere. Be careful when scrambling around rocky areas. They love to play hide and seek. The Deep Sea Dragonfish If there were a prize for the most hideous fish in the ocean, the deep sea dragonfish would win. With slimy, scaleless skin, massive teeth, and a face only a mother could love, this bad boy of the sea is nothing to mess with. It likes to swim between 700 feet and 6,000 feet below the surface of the ocean, where the waters are the darkest and coldest. Along with some other creatures on this list, the deep sea dragonfish relies on its bioluminescent body parts to catch prey. It also uses its hanging appendage, which boasts a little red light on the end, coming out from its lower jaw. Many fish mistake this little light for prey luring them right into the jaws of the deep-sea dragonfish. Very clever dragonfish. Very clever indeed. 
the Fang Tooth. The Mariana Trench is an underwater trench with a depth of 35,000 feet, nearly seven miles below the ocean's surface. Let that sink in. While scientists know the Mariana Trench exists, it's one of the least explored places on Earth. It's also the deepest area of Earth's oceans. And although many creatures down there probably haven't even been seen by humans yet, scientists have had the creepy pleasure of getting to know the fang tooth. The fang tooth fish shamelessly lives up to its name. Just look at that thing. The fang tooth is carnivorous and feeds on just about anything it can find that gets caught in its sharp toothed mouth. These fish rely on their contact chemoreception to find prey. In other words, they can sense chemical residue that comes off of other living organisms in the deep sea. This is because they don't have any light-producing cells on their bodies, unlike many other deep sea fish. On top of all that, it's pretty dark down there, so whatever crosses their path, they chomp on. While these guys look pretty scary, they're not a threat to humans. They only grow about 7 inches long. Even so, I wouldn't want to run into one of these things during a relaxing swim in the ocean. The Dunkel Osteus Strangely enough, this prehistoric fish, known as the T-Rex of the seas, had no teeth. Those were replaced with bony plates that allowed it to have the strongest bite among other monsters of its size. The Goblin Shark if you thought the movies about sharks were scary, this next deep sea creature will make you swear off going for dips in the ocean forever. However, it lives 3,000 feet underwater, so you'll never likely see it face to face. The goblin shark looks like a cross between a shark and a creature from your worst nightmare. These sharks boast a protruding sword-like snout with a jaw that juts out to match. Unlike other sharks that have more of a gray hue, this creepy thing looks not so pretty in pink. Aside from their scary demeanor, what do scientists really know about the goblin shark? Well, not much, except that they can grow up to 18 feet in length. Looks like there's still a lot to learn about these guys, if you dare to. By the way, did you know that sharks don't sleep? Many species have to keep water moving over their gills to get oxygen so they can't fall into a deep sleep like we do. That's why they stay half awake during rest. Typically, sharks don't even close their eyes. The Cookie Cutter Shark This shark is a living horror, with lower teeth being big and sharp, while the upper ones are much smaller. When its teeth fall off, the shark eats them to maintain calcium levels. Pretty smart solution for a shark. The Frilled Shark Studying the frilled shark is like looking through a portal back to prehistoric times. That's because scientists think that these eel-like sharks haven't changed much since their oldest ancestors roamed the deep sea waters, so they're sometimes referred to as living fossils. These sharks' mouths are filled with a terrifying 25 rows of backward-facing sharp teeth, 300 in total. They're designed to grasp prey and hold them tight so they can't get away, according to early studies of the shark conducted in 1884 and published in the Bulletin of the Essex Institute. Luckily for swimmers, the frilled sharks live between 390 feet and 4,200 feet below the ocean's surface, so they'll probably never run into them. Probably. This is probably the worst nightmare of any dentist. The Northern Stargazer Take a look at this cutie. The northern stargazer is definitely not something you'd wish to see on the ocean floor. This horrid creature hides its body under the sand, leaving its face above to wait for prey. The Tasseled Wobegong Here's another carpet shark on our list. It lies low on the bottom of the sea and patiently waits for its prey to come by. The Australian Ghost Shark The Australian Ghost Shark isn't really even a shark, but a very bony fish. It's also a living fossil. It hasn't changed within the last 400 million years. Believe it or not, 
Sharks and humans have a common ancestor that lived around 440 million years ago. Even though we both evolved in our own way, there are still some signs of that connection. For example, the genome of an elephant shark is very similar to humans. The Leo Pluridon. This list of terrifying creatures would be incomplete without mentioning the terrifying and prehistoric Leo Pluridon. This carnivorous marine reptile existed during the Colovian stage of the Middle Jurassic era and ruled the waters at 9 feet in length. Scientists believe Leo Pluridon thrived in this deep sea trench because of its ability to swim long distances and its four paddle-like limbs. While they probably weren't able to propel themselves toward prey like other animals of the area, they did manage to accelerate and attack very ruthlessly and efficiently. Additionally, they relied on their long snouts to smell prey, which leads scientists to believe they didn't rely on sight for hunting. This means they could have thrived in the dark Mariana Trench. Around 150 million years ago, Leo Pluridon became extinct due to competition for prey against other thriving marine reptiles. And I think I speak for all of us when I say thank goodness for that. Considering that scientists have only explored 5% of the ocean floor and found some of the scariest sea creatures imaginable, one can only dream of what other animals reside in the deep sea waters. Perhaps it's best to keep them in your imagination, am I right? The Megamouth Shark This shark is a filter feeder, and it's friendly to humans, although its huge mouth can look quite threatening. Like basking sharks, it swims with its mouth constantly wide open, as if it were on Twitter. The Gulper Eel This deep-sea eel has an easily distended belly that allows it to swallow prey twice its size in a single monstrous bite. They have very unusual jaw shapes and can reach about 2 to 3 feet in length. Do you see that large log near the ocean floor? Maybe it's part of an old ship. Treasure, gold, diamonds, I'm rich! Well, as you get closer, you notice something. It's swimming! It's not a shark or a dolphin, it's a saltwater crocodile! Now don't panic. If you bump into one of these reptiles in the sea, it's unlikely it'll think of you as food. Crocodiles have a special valve in their throat that stops them from drowning underwater. But that doesn't mean they can't bite. Usually, they're heading to a nearby island, and the quickest way there is to body surf. They can't really take the ferry, you know. Watching one from a distance should be okay. Just don't swim to shore right away. They love to ambush their lunch in shallow water. If there's one time I'd want to see a great white shark, it's when I'm diving with crocodiles. They'll gladly take a crocodile-sized nibble, given the right motivation. Think you know what lurks in the depths of the ocean? While nearly 95% of our oceans haven't been explored yet, it's hard not to let your imagination run wild. But thanks to brave explorers, deep sea cameras, and awesome archaeologists, we do know about some pretty incredible sea creatures living in our waters today and millions of years ago. From the 9-foot spider crab to the 60-foot prehistoric megalodon, these sea dwellers come in all shapes and sizes. But let's focus on sea creatures famous for their huge size. Can you guess which living species of whale is the largest? Well, it's not the orca, but that's a good guess. The orca is a toothed whale that can grow to anywhere from 23 feet to 32 feet, which is slightly smaller than a school bus. How about the narwhal? Nope, they're not the biggest either. These unicorns of the sea live mainly in Arctic waters and only grow 13 feet to 20 feet in length. And that's including their 9-foot tusk. Tired of guessing? Okay, I give in. The largest whale that still exists today is the blue whale. At a jaw-dropping 82 feet to 105 feet, the blue whale is not only the biggest whale we know of, but is currently the largest animal to have ever lived on Earth. Seriously. These animals are bigger than a T-Rex, and even the prehistoric Megalodon. 
If you were to put a blue whale next to a school bus, it would look like it could swallow it. Think about that. According to National Geographic, a blue whale's tongue can weigh the same as an elephant. And their hearts can weigh as much as a car. That doesn't even sound possible. It's no wonder these giants need to eat about four tons of krill every day. While there aren't too many animals living today that can compete with the blue whale's epic proportions, there is an entirely different species that is a good contender. And it's not quite what you would expect. It's a jellyfish. No, I'm not talking about the little jellyfish that wash up on the shore and ruin a perfectly good day at the beach. I'm referring to the lion's mane jellyfish, the biggest jellyfish around. This invertebrate can grow up to 120 feet long. They also come in different gorgeous colors like red, purple, or even shades of orange. As if their length wasn't impressive, the lion's mane jellyfish boasts a whopping eight sets of 70 to 150 tentacles. That means they can have up to 1,200 in total. And here's the giant oceanic manta ray, the largest type of ray in the world. Their wingspan can be longer than a bus. These guys can reach 30 feet in length. They also have the biggest brain compared to body size among all fish. Unlike their stingray cousins, mantas don't have venomous tails. And while the lion's mane jellyfish and the blue whale are yet to be beaten for the longest sea creature, there is one marine creature that can grow even larger in length. The Portuguese Physalia physalis, tentacles and all, can reach a length of 165 feet long. And that's according to mentalfloss.com. While this thing may look a lot like a jellyfish, it's actually known as a siphonophore, and there are hundreds and sometimes thousands of them that are genetically identical. Their long tentacles help the organism catch prey, and its sting is fatal to most animals, even humans in some cases. What's even creepier is that if one of the tentacles comes off the organism for whatever reason, it can float around the water for days before decomposing. Even if it's detached, this tentacle can still sting you. But don't go running out of the ocean just yet. Your chances of being hurt by a Portuguese Phasalia Phasalis sting are pretty slim. However, if you do get stung, the side effects aren't pretty, with welts, stomach cramps, an elevated heart rate, and an upset stomach. While you don't want to go anywhere near these long creatures, they sure are pretty to look at. Check out all those colors! The Shastasaurus is the biggest marine reptile that has ever existed. These predators lived during the late Triassic period, about 210 million years ago. These amazing giants could reach lengths of up to 69 feet and weighed more than 75 tons. This made the Shastasaurus as heavy as a blue whale. And if you could stand this creature up vertically, it'd be as tall as a seven-story building. Despite appearances, the Shastasaurus was actually pretty slim for its size. Its ribcage was only six feet across. You'd think that this big guy was chowing down on other dinosaurs, but that's not the case at all. This reptile survived on a diet that consisted of small fish and cephalopods, like octopuses and squids. The Alberto Nectes is a bright representative of the Pleosaur family, meaning that this marine reptile had a small head on an incredibly long neck and large flipper-like limbs that helped it move through the water. These creatures occupied the seas around North America 76 to 70 million years ago. The length of this sea monster could reach 38 feet, with its neck taking up 23 feet of that length. Its neck was a true record breaker. It had a whopping 76 bones in it. No other animal known to humankind has had so many vertebrae in its neck. Scientists aren't sure why they needed such a lengthy neck. They might have used it to collect shellfish off the seabed. Or perhaps it helped them capture their main prey, fish and squids. This aquatic reptile also had gastroliths in its stomachs. Some of them were as big as 5.5 inches in diameter. The Tylosaurus belonged to the Mosasaur family. It dominated the shallow seas of North America about 85 to 80 million years ago. This was an enormous predator, 
with the biggest representatives reaching 45 feet in length. It had a narrow hydrodynamic body with a blunt, powerful head that the animal used to ram and stun its prey. Its body was equipped with agile flippers and a long tail decorated with a maneuverable fin. The Tylosaurus was a carnivore, and its diet included not only fish, turtles, and small sharks, but also other mosasaurs, pleosaurs, and flightless birds. Meet Ophthalmosaurus. This prehistoric reptile thrived during the late Jurassic period and lived in oceans all over the world. Ophthalmosaurus weighed somewhere around 6,000 pounds and grew to approximately 16 feet long, according to NewDinosaurs.com. That's about the same length as the beluga whale that exists today. It's too bad these guys went extinct before we had a chance to see them ourselves, as their cartoonish wide eyes and dolphin-like features are pretty darn cute. Of course, the ophthalmosaurus evolved over time to become ophthalmologists, or eye doctors that we know today. No, that's just a lie. Just testing you. The Mosasaurus is a truly gigantic predator that dominated the seas all over the world about 66 million years ago. According to fossil evidence, some specimens could be more than 50 feet in length. This fact makes the Mosasaurus the biggest marine carnivore of its time. One of the most terrifying things about this creature was its crocodile-like head, decorated with literally hundreds of razor-sharp teeth neatly organized in two rows on both jaws. The thing is that it was pretty challenging for the Mosasaurus to grab its prey in the water. That's why it had all these teeth, plus something special. Pterygoid teeth anchored to the bones on the roof of its mouth. This made hunting and holding onto its prey much easier. The Styxosaurus belonged to the Pleosaur family and lived during the late Cretaceous period, around 85 to 70 million years ago. Upon first glance at this dinosaur, you might mistake it for a sea snake, and it'd be an honest mistake. Styxosauruses were about 35 feet in length, but over 16 feet of that consisted just of their long snake-like neck. They had a comparatively small body and weighed approximately four tons. Their mouths were full of razor-sharp cone-shaped teeth that they used to catch fish. They didn't need to chew their prey, thanks to the 200 small stones called gastroliths in their bellies that probably aided in digestion. At the same time, some scientists believe that the Styxosaurus used these stones to sink to the ocean bottom in search of particular types of fish. Huh, looks kind of like Nessie to me. What's the scariest predator under the ocean? The crocodile? Huh, I don't think so. Loch Ness Monster? Please, it never existed. How about the Kronosaurus? Well, it is extinct, but you might be onto something. Let's take a look at what it'd be like if these creatures were still around today. First things first, what on earth was it? The Kronosaurus was a marine carnivore that lived in the cool, high-latitude Aromanga Sea. It covered vast areas of inland Australia between 90 and 120 million years ago, during the early Cretaceous period. Near-complete fossils of the creature were also found near Colombia, which is a country that has a noted connection to prehistoric reptiles and turtles. This fact makes it extremely possible that the monster I'm about to describe existed worldwide. You might have heard Saurus and thought, oh, it's a dinosaur. But these were actually reptiles. They were the largest member of the Pleosauroidea family, referred to as Pleosaurs. Fossil evidence suggests they weighed over 20,000 pounds and were roughly 30 feet in length. Just to put that in perspective, the longest crocodile ever measured was a saltwater crocodile by the name of Lolong from the Philippines. It was 20 feet in length and weighed just under 2,500 pounds. And that's still 10 feet shorter and incredibly lighter than the average Kronosaurus making the crocodile seem like nothing more than a glorified goldfish in comparison. Despite its terrifying length, the most physically daunting feature of the Kronosaurus was its head. Its skull was about 8 feet long, which was actually proportionally large given the size of its body length. Anything that was unfortunate enough to end up inside the Kronosaurus's mouth may have been given false hope. After all, the teeth of the beast weren't actually that sharp. 
On second thought, I take that back. I wouldn't feel confident around a toothless snake, let alone being inside the mouth of this monster. But it's true that the Kronosaurus's teeth weren't sharp, especially when compared to other carnivorous reptiles, such as crocodiles and alligators. The teeth of this prehistoric sea creature were instead conical. This means that they were cone-like in shape. Unfortunately, this lack of sharpness didn't make them less dangerous. The teeth were enormous and could be up to 12 inches long from the crown tips to the bottom of the roots. This obviously meant that the Kronosaurus had an extremely powerful bite. It was estimated to be up to 30,000 newtons, which is almost twice as powerful as the bite of a large saltwater crocodile. Because of the bluntness of their teeth, they weren't suited for twisting their prey once in their grasp. But the size and shape of the teeth made them perfect for simple open-and-shut biting. They would have had no problem crushing hard objects such as the toughest of shells any sea turtle could offer. Just like crocodiles, the Kronosaurus is believed to have had a short neck. This may have been an adaptation to allow the beast to successfully catch small evasive animals. Their body, in general, was fusiform and streamlined. This means it was narrowed at both ends and had very little resistance to the flow of water. The Kronosaurus was also equipped with four paddle-like limbs. The hind limbs were larger than the front ones. They could span approximately seven feet in diameter. All in all, this set the Kronosaurus up to effortlessly propel itself through the waters and be an ultimate predator. Predator X, if you will? That's the name that was given to the fossil of a creature discovered near Svalbard, a Norwegian island group, in 2009. The fossil was identified as a 50-foot-long, 100,000-pound monster with a bite force of 33,000 pounds per square inch. This might be the highest bite force of any known animal. Although Predator X is yet to be classified as any specific type of animal, it was definitely a pleosaur, like the Kronosaurus. And even if it wasn't Predator X, the Kronosaurus was still most definitely a ferocious titan when it roamed Earth's oceans. The Kronosaurus actually got its name from the Greek mythological figure of Cronus, the father of Zeus. Cronus was viewed as a titan from a generation of super-powerful beings. So what was it that the Kronosaurus, this terrifying monster, actually feasted on to satisfy its appetite? This creature was known to eat sea turtles, squid, and other larger marine reptiles of that time, such as elasmosaurids and ichthyosaurs. This suggests that if crocodiles existed in the realms of the Kronosaurus, they too might have turned into lunch for the beast. There's evidence from the fossil remains of the Kronosaurus that suggests that they also feasted on sharks, which I know is a disappointment to those of you who view that beast as the king of the ocean. Not when the Kronosaurus was around, my friend. In any case, grounding all kinds of food into small pieces to help digest them would have been difficult without small teeth. This explains the presence of rounded stones found in many of the remains of these sea creatures. Researchers believe these stones may have been swallowed to control buoyancy or to help process food. It's also entirely possible they were accidentally swallowed while feeding on other animals from the sea floor. As if the Kronosaurus even needed to be a meanie with its already existing power and size, there's also evidence to suggest that it indeed might have been. It turns out that after using all its impressive attributes to catch its dinner, the Kronosaurus first liked to play with its food, like a cat does with a mouse. I guess since the hunt was so easy for them, they needed to get their fun from somewhere else. Well, I think now you should have a good idea about these creatures. So let's ask ourselves what it would be like if they were still around today. And by the way, why aren't they? Well, the Kronosaurus was completely finished off by the same KT meteor that took out the dinosaurs 66 million years ago. But even before this catastrophic event, they were coming under increased pressure from an even bigger and more vicious family of carnivorous marine reptiles known as Mosasaurs. You can't always be a top dog, I guess, or rather, top marine reptile. But what if this never happened and they were still roaming Earth? Well, this might be obvious, but can you imagine what kind of impact that would have on sea tourism? 
Based on the impact that famous movies about sharks and killer whales had, what do you think the presence of a Kronosaurus in the ocean would do to beaches? The very creature that would eat sharks and whales for breakfast? Beaches would certainly become a great place to go for a quiet walk, because nobody else would even be there. And what about such activities as boating, surfing, and scuba diving? You think anyone would dare try them, knowing that this 30-foot beast could be lurking beneath them? Let's give humans some credit and assume most of them wouldn't. This would cripple the global sea tourism industry, which is responsible for earning roughly $143 billion every year. Just to make sure this shocking point hits home, the most expensive yacht to ever roam the ocean was called the History Supreme. Its master bedroom was believed to have a statue made of T-Rex's bone and a wall made of meteorite rocks, as well as a 24 karat gold panoramic wall aquarium. Anyway, this yacht was worth nearly $5 billion, meaning you could buy 38 of them with the money lost and potential damages to sea tourism caused by the Kronosaurus. I'm sure that the yacht's owner was happy the beast never made an appearance in their luxurious aquarium. So luxurious, in fact, that some people believe the History Supreme, reportedly owned by some business genius from Malaysia, never even existed. Rumor has it that it was simply an elaborate hoax fabricated by the supposed designer. Anyway, I don't think the trouble would just stop there. People could actually be in serious danger, regardless of being near the ocean or not. No, I'm not about to tell you that this thing would grow legs, adapt to living on land, and start picking us off one by one. At least, I hope not. I'm just going to point out the damage that the Kronosaurus would inflict through its devastating impact on sea trade. In America, ocean transit accounts for 76% of national trade. On top of this, more than 100 vital pharmaceutical products originate in the sea. I'll also state the obvious and point out that the ocean is a huge food source for us humans. The presence of the Kronosaurus could have a great impact on our relationship with the ocean, something we usually take for granted. <laughs>